In this video, you will learn how to properly configure user ID tracking on a website with Google Analytics 4. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you're new here, I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GA4, consider subscribing. If you have a website where people can log in, then it makes sense to implement user ID tracking. Because if you don't, then the same person with multiple devices can be reported as different users. User ID tracking can help you with that. Because when a user logs in into his or her account on your website, you will send a user ID from your database to Google Analytics. Then GA will understand that this person with a smartphone is the same as this one with laptop. So let's take a look at the implementation. In this video, I presume that you already have some basic knowledge about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So this means that you have at least created a Google Analytics 4 configuration tag where you have your measurement ID added right here. If you are completely new to this, then take a look at the Google Tag Manager tutorial for beginners and I will post a link to it below the video. Also in this Google Tag Manager container, I have one Google Analytics 4 event tag that sends the purchase when a visitor makes a payment. When it comes to user ID tracking, it means that your website must have some sort of login functionality, or in other words, your visitors can sign up and log into their accounts. This is needed because in your database, every user has its own unique ID. And in this video, we're going to send that ID to Google Analytics. This is important because Google Analytics 4 can use that user ID to understand that a visitor who has logged in maybe from a different device is still the same person. On this demo website, I have a login page where I can enter my username and password and then log in. So let's do that. Let's enter my username and click login. This is obviously a fake page. And in reality, I would be able to do something, but just for demonstration purposes, this is the only thing that you can see, basically a blank page. But what is important now is that I have logged in and this is my account. To implement the user ID feature, you must somehow get the user ID into the data layer because then we will configure Google Tag Manager to take that user ID from the data layer and send it further to Google Analytics. There are various ways how you can get user ID in the data layer, but those ways depend on what kind of content management system or what kind of platform are you using. If you're dealing with a custom built website, then your best shot would be to cooperate with developers and ask them to push the user ID to the data layer. Here is a sample code that your developer could implement on a website. Once this code is activated, you will see in the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, the event name, which is user data, and then user ID, which is this one. Your developer would be responsible for replacing this with the actual ID of the user who has just logged in. Simply copy pasting this code will not be enough because this part must be different for every user. So the ID of one user can be something like this, while the other user's ID might be something like this. If you're dealing with a popular platform, for example, WordPress, then you could try to find a plugin that you can install on your platform and that plugin will push the user ID information to the data layer. Speaking of WordPress, there is a very popular plugin called Google Tag Manager for WordPress. And when a user logs in on your website, that plugin will add the user ID to the data layer. But in my example, let's pretend that I'm dealing with a custom platform. Therefore, I ask a developer to push the user ID to the data layer. Once your developer implements the user ID and pushes that to the data layer, here is how you can check whether that is done properly. You can go to Google Tag Manager, click Preview, and then in this window, you will be asked to enter the URL of the website. In my case, I will enter the URL of my login page. Then click Connect, and a new tab will open that says Connected. Now I will log in with my account, click Login, and this is my account. Now I should go to Google Tag Manager and one of the events right here should be something related to login or user data or whatever you have asked your developer to push. In my case, that event is called login. I can click it and then I can expand this API call. So I can click it right here and I will see two parameters. One is event login and the other one is user ID. This is what I need in order to implement user ID tracking in Google Analytics 4. But keep in mind that your developer cannot place anything he or she wants in this field. According to Google's terms of service, this field cannot include things like email address, social security number, or anything else that can easily identify the person. It should be some random string or number that is stored in your website's database. 
So since I already have the user ID in the data layer, now I have to turn it into a variable in Google Tag Manager because you cannot use the data in Google Tag Manager unless you create a variable. In my case, the user ID is stored as user ID with the uppercase I. That is why I have to create a data layer variable for that. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, Variables, then scroll down to the User Defined Variables section and then click New. Click Variable Configuration, Data Layer Variable, and then here I have to enter the name of the key that is in the data layer. And in my case, that is user ID with the uppercase I. This is case sensitive. Double click it, copy, and then paste it right here. Then I will name this variable. Here I can enter whatever I want. However, here it must be exactly as it is in the data layer. If you have something else like user underscore ID or ID or something else, then you must enter that particular name right here. Click Save. Now let's go to Tags. And as I've said earlier in this video, I presume that you already have at least Google Analytics 4 configuration tag in your container. Click it, then click this pencil to edit the tag, and then click Fields to Set. Click Add Row, and here you should enter user underscore ID, exactly like this. This is the parameter that Google Analytics 4 expects when it comes to user ID tracking. And in this field, you should insert the data layer variable that you have just created. To insert the variable, click this button and then keep looking for your data layer variable. In my case, this is it. I will click it and it will be automatically inserted in this field. Click Save. If you have multiple Google Analytics 4 tags, for example, event for purchase, event for click, event for something else, and all of those tags are using the same GA4 configuration tag, those tags will automatically inherit this parameter. Now let's test whether this is working properly. Click Preview button to refresh the preview mode. Here I am on the login page once again. I will log in. And here in Tag Assistant, I will see that on the container loaded event that fired after the user ID was pushed to the data layer, I will see that my tag fired. I click it and I see that one of the fields is the user ID. And here is that field's value. Now let's test whether this is working properly and whether user ID was received by Google Analytics 4. You can do that by going to Google Analytics, then configure and debug view. And here you will see a stream of information that was sent to Google Analytics 4. And one of those things is user ID. User ID is highlighted like this. And if, for example, you click on the page view, you will see some event information and also you will see user properties that you can click. And here is the user ID that was received by Google Analytics 4. Keep in mind that GA4 is currently under heavy development. Therefore, some things in the interface might change and you might see some differences between my video and what you see in your interface. But don't panic and keep looking because eventually you will see the information somewhere right here. And if you still struggle, then take a look at the description of the video or maybe in the comments because I might have mentioned some updates there. When you have tested everything, then go to Google Tag Manager, click Submit to publish these changes. For example, you can name something like User ID in GA4 and click Publish. Within the next 24 hours, you will start seeing some user ID related information in your Google Analytics 4 interface. Let's take a look at several places where you can find that user ID information. For example, here I am in one of the standard reports. In this case, that is the event report. And then I can take a look at how many visitors on my website were tracked with the user ID feature and how many were not. Because only part of the traffic has actually logged into their accounts. In this report, I can click on Edit Comparisons right here, or I can click Add Comparison right here. And then as one of the dimensions, I could select Signed In with User ID. And then in this field, you should select Yes. Thanks to this comparison, I will see the data that is coming from users who have signed into their accounts. And with their events, I was also sending the user ID. Click Apply. And here you will see all website visitors and only a small fraction has actually logged in because, well, most of my website visitors are just reading blog posts and they are not students of my courses. Then another place where you can find user ID information is in the Explore section. So click there and then keep looking for the User Explorer. Click it. And here you will find a list of all users and visitors of my website. Those IDs that contain a dot like this, they are not logged in. This is a regular Google Analytics client ID that GA gives to any visitor and those IDs are generated randomly. However, those shorter IDs like this one, 
they are coming from my database and these are the users who have logged into their course accounts. But we are not done yet because if you want to use the user ID dimension in other reports, for example, freeform exploration, unfortunately, you won't be able to do that because user ID, even though you send it to Google Analytics, is not available as a standalone dimension. Let's take a look. For example, here I have a new freeform exploration. And let's say that I will just add, I don't know, let's say event count metric. And then in the dimension section, I want to add the user ID. So if I click this plus icon and then keep looking for the user ID, I will not find anything right here. If you want to use the user ID as a dimension in your other reports, you must create a separate user scoped custom dimension in Google Analytics 4. To do that, first, you have to send user ID not only as, well, actually user ID, but also as a separate custom dimension. And to do that, you have to go to Google Tag Manager, then go to Tags, click on your configuration tag. And here we are going to send it as a user scope custom dimension. And to do that, you have to click on user properties, add row, and then add some parameter name that is named anything else except the user ID. Because user ID as a parameter is reserved and you cannot create custom dimensions for user ID written like this. But you can do something like user ID dimension, for example. This will work just fine. And here, in the value, you can enter the same thing that you used right here. Now click Save. And then in Google Analytics, you have to go to Configure, Custom Definitions, then Create Custom Dimensions, and then enter User ID. You can enter any name right here. It can be something like CRM ID, Internal ID, whatever you want. Then the scope must be User. You can enter or leave this field empty, I mean the description. And then in the user property, you have to enter that very exact parameter name that you used in the configuration tag right here. In my case, that is user underscore ID underscore dimension. I will copy it and paste it right here. Then click Save. And within the next 24 hours, you will be able to use that user ID in your exploration reports as well. Now let's test whether this is working properly. So click the preview button in your Google Tag Manager container. The page reloads, I will log in once again, then I see that my page view tag, or in other words, configuration tag has fired, the user ID needed for the user ID feature of Google Analytics 4, and this is my user property that I will see as a user scoped custom dimension in Google Analytics 4. Now let's go to GA4, configure, debug view, and here I can see my user scoped custom dimension. If I click on the page view, now I see that there are two user properties. One is user ID needed for the user ID feature, and this is for my user scoped custom dimension. I wish that this part was more straightforward, meaning that it would be just enough to have the user ID and this would be available as a dimension in Google Analytics 4 automatically. But right now, this looks like the only viable workaround for the situation. And when the next day comes, you should be able to use that dimension right here by clicking the plus icon in the exploration, then enter user ID, click this checkbox, click apply, and then you will see some data right here. Oh, actually, I forgot to add that user ID to the rows. And the reason why I'm still seeing not set right here is because I have just created that dimension. Still not enough time has passed in order to process this data properly. So from tomorrow, you will start seeing some data in this column. After you have checked everything and you are sure that this is working properly, publish your container by clicking submit and then complete all the other steps that are necessary. And that is how you can implement user ID tracking on a website with Google Analytics 4. Remember, you have to include the user ID with every event that you send from your website to GA. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.